Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today I'm going to show you an advanced partitioning technique that you can use when you set up Linux on a computer. And we're going to make some assumptions here. First of all that the machine that you're using has one hard drive in it, that it's a rather large drive. We're talking about over 250 gigabytes and that the machine does not have EFI or EUFI enabled. Either it's an older machine that doesn't have that feature or if it's a newer machine you have gone into the BIOS and turned off Secure Boot and EUFI before installing Linux. Even though Linux will gladly install on a machine like that, most distributions will, I don't see the benefit in it and I always recommend to go ahead and turn that off. Now if you're going to be doing something a little bit more complicated like using multiple drives in the machine or you are going to set up like a RAID array or something like that this method is probably not for you and I encourage you to do some research uh, about it before you proceed and find out what the best partitioning scheme would be for whatever you plan to do. Okay so anybody who has installed an Ubuntu flavored Linux operating system will be familiar with this screen. This is the Ubiquiti installer and this is where it asks you about partitions. Other distributions of Linux have other partitioning um, screens that they show you so you can do the same thing here but it might not work exactly the same way. Alright and in this case by the way we're installing Linux Lite. I was spinning up a Linux Lite virtual machine and I thought about it and I thought hey I could show people how to do this. So I got about this far before I started recording the video. Okay, the first option that it usually gives you is to blank out the drive and start over. And that is a fine option to choose. It is automatic. It will create one big huge partition where all of the files for your system will live. That will include the boot files, all of the uh, operating system files and the programs you install and all of the files in the home folder that belong to all the users of the system. And the only problem with this is is that by default it creates a swap partition at the end of the drive and that makes it very difficult to clone that drive to make an image file of it and then move it to another drive because usually when we do that we're moving it to a bigger drive these days and because that swap partition is sitting at the end it makes it very difficult to resize those partitions to take up the space on your new drive. However if you're new to Linux you're just starting out and you don't quite understand what's going on in this video I would suggest that this would be the way to go when you first start out just let the system do the partitioning for you or if you're using a very small drive a virtual drive for instance like we're using in the virtual box here or the machine happens to have a very small like solid state hard drive in it that's less than 250 gigabytes then go ahead and just click that and go on it, you'll be fine the uh, swap partition that the system creates is usually about uh, the same size as the memory that's installed in the machine so that's something to keep in mind if you have a lot of memory in your computer maybe you don't want a swap partition that big we'll talk about that in a little bit more as we roll on okay so if you have a totally blank drive with nothing on it this is what you're going to be presented with if you have partitions that are already on that drive then you can just delete them using the delete here or um, you can also create on the drive name to create a new partition table and I think that will blank everything out in this case we have a 64 gigabyte virtual drive we're gonna pretend it's a really big drive though we're gonna pretend like that drive is huge and uh, so we can get the partition sizes right so once you have a, a new partition table, you can just click on the name of the drive there, in this case SDA. And yes, I want to continue. So we're going to create a partition table and now you see we have free space. So come down here and click on that free space, double click, and it will give you this lovely tool. The first partition we're going to create is useful if you have a spinning drive or if you have an SSHD which is a hybrid drive. 
this will create we're going to create a boot partition at the beginning of the drive so we put the kernel and all of the associated boot files right up at the front of the drive in its own space and it won't get mixed in with the rest of the system files or user files and we can do some interesting things here first of all it has to be primary and we want to choose the ext2 file system this older version of the ext file system does not use a journal so in a small drive like this that's not going to contain a whole huge number of files we really don't want a journal anyway and this will make the file system run faster because it's not worrying about keeping up with a journal and now for the mount point we're going to call it boot Oop, let me double check that size there make it 512 megabytes done now if you're installing to a SSD a solid-state hard drive you don't need to do this you could just uh, skip this step and create a root partition at the front of the drive and everything will be hunky-dory fine the reason why is because the main reason that we're creating this boot sector is to have that at the very front of the drive at all times uh, just to make the boot process go a little bit faster with an SSHD we're not dealing with a head that's actually scanning a disk so it really doesn't matter where it is in the uh, grand scheme of allocated uh, file space all right so now that we have that created we are going to create the root partition this will be where our Linux distribution actually lives and I'm going to choose to make mine about 15 gigabytes this is where all of your Linux uh, system files live and anything that you install all of your program files will live here so if you're going to make uh, if you're not really going to do a whole lot with the system you're not going to be installing a bunch of software you probably get away with about 10 or 15 megabytes no problem or gigabytes rather it won't be any problem the the system itself usually takes up about uh, six to seven gigabytes and uh, we're just making some free space here for what we might install or any temporary files we might create uh, in the root partition so you can adjust this back and forth if I was doing this on um, a laptop that had a lot of users on it and probably is going to have a lot of software on it I'd make it about 25 gigabytes we want this to be a primary partition ext4 and choose the slash by the way if you uh, play a lot of games and you know you're going to be installing a lot of software there's there's no upper limit to that you could make it 30 or 40 gigabytes chances are the system won't use all of that but you'll have uh, lots of space okay we're going to click free space again we're going to make this a primary partition and we're going to put a swap file on here if you have four gigabytes or more of memory on your computer then you need to create or actually uh, four gigabytes or less you need to create a swap partition that is at least the size of the memory that you have on the machine so uh, if you have four gigabytes then you would create like a little bit more like uh, 4100 megabytes and if you had five gigabytes it would be 5100 gigabytes if you had six gigabytes it would be 6100 and on up until just about eight if you have less than four gigabytes of memory I would create a go ahead and create a four gigabyte swap partition anyway this will give the system lots of swap space to use just in case it needs it somewhere down the road so if you have two gigabytes go ahead and create a four gigabyte swap partition 
uh, just in case a program or something goes crazy and starts demanding memory it will be able to swap to that extra space uh, and uh, the system won't crash or t tell you it's out of memory if you have eight gigabytes or more of swap then you can elect to create a smaller swap file so you could put a two gigabyte swap file on the system and you would probably be just fine because with eight gigabytes of memory or more the system probably will not swap however I do not recommend completely not putting a swap file on the system uh, because there are some programs that do need to have the swap space and also it can cause problems with the computer going to sleep or the computer going to hibernate and if that's functionality that you want then you really need to have a swap partition that is going to be uh, at least uh, at the size of the memory if the memory is 8 gigabytes or smaller and above that you could probably shave that off I've done a, done a whole video on that so once again let me recap that so it makes sense 4 gigabytes of memory or lower create a 4 gigabyte swap space 4 gigabytes up to 8 gigabytes create the same swap space as the memory you have so in my case I am going to create a 4 gigabyte swap space because this machine has 2 gigabytes of memory and it'll actually come up at like 399 okay and uh, that's close enough for for what we're doing so if you actually have like four gigabytes of memory in the machine and you want to match that then I would do um, like this I would make it 4100 that way you know you have a little bit more swap than memory and we're just gonna choose swap area from here I know that last bit might be a little bit confusing gang um, and there's a whole lot of debate out there about uh, swap partition size and whether you actually need it and all that other stuff that's what I have found that works best for me and over the last couple of years I've probably set up two or three hundred Linux systems so I'm just using it to draw off my own experience there and finally we're going to make the last part of the file system here. That's going to be our prim last primary partition. And we're going to make that the home folder. Okay, a couple of things to talk about real quick before we proceed and go ahead and install our operating system. First of all, some of you may have noticed that I have used four primary partitions on this drive which means that I will not be able to add any more partitions to it later. Uh, that is true, and I do this all the time because most of the time you are not going to want to add any partitions. If you should ever think that you want to add another partition at some time, then you can make the fourth uh, primary partition a logical partition, which will allow you to do that. I just think it's simpler and safer to have everything be a primary partition with this old MBR method. Uh, second of all, if you want to install Linux again, since you have put all of your data files in a separate folder, you can take your new Linux distribution and pop it in the drive and boot it up and go through the installation process like we have here. And then all you will do is uncheck format instead of creating new partitions you would reuse the same partitions here so you would click on let's say this partition and it would say do not use partition you would choose ext4 file system you would tell it that you wanted to format okay if uh, uh, we do that with the boot as well put your boot boot files there put your uh, system files here and then when you get down to your home partition do not allow this installer to actually format that partition but tell it that you want to mount it at home in the new installation when you get done you will have your new installation of Linux whatever that might be an upgrade or you're changing flavors and all of the files that are in your home directory are still there so all of your settings email and personal files will still be in the system and the only thing that you will have to do at that point is reinstall the software 
that you had originally installed on the uh, original distribution of Linux. So it will not carry the software over. Also, if you use Wine, you are going to have to delete the Wine directory out of your home directory and completely reinstall all of those programs from scratch. If you reinstall Wine, it's not going to work because Wine sticks some things uh, in the uh, USR directory uh, in the Linux system when it installs uh, things in Wine. Of course, Wine is the Windows emulation layer that you can use to run Windows software on Linux. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's what that is. So I guess that's about all of the caveats that go along with doing things this way. I'm going to go ahead and tell this to install because I think we're done with the video. It will confirm. And now it is actually going to go off and install Linux Lite. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the information here. And you guys can go off and check uh, Freedom Penguin out on the web. The uh, link is in the description below. Also check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And when you do, uh, be sure and give it a like. I would appreciate that very much. And we will be doing this again soon. So I guess I got to jump over here to this other desktop. Let me go over here. And I can stop the screen capture software. Talk to you guys again later.